I think the passion and the dedication, the traveling that you put into it, I think, come on, make him the blogger of the year. Ninety-nine out the first part tunnel. Hey guys, Gogsy here, and welcome to this fantastic in interview. I've got the chance to interview Stephen Robinson, and congratulations on your Manager of the Month. Cheers, thank you. And honestly, we couldn't have timed it any better because I didn't uh, or arrange this a couple of weeks ago, and then. You get the award, so really, I'm buzzing. So I've got a few questions for yourself. As mother and manager, take us through an average week in the life. Oh, mm, there's no, no one week's ever the same. <laughs> you know, um, just when you think things are nice and smooth, that you'll have a problem somewhere along the line. Okay. Whether it be with somebody wanting your players, whether a player unhappy or a reserve game being moved and changed and what have you. So but a typical week would be um, we, we train Monday. We report at 12 o'clock on a Monday. Um, and we, we train, we do gym work in the morning, we have an afternoon session which is a little bit lighter for the boys that played on the Saturday and a hard session for the, the boys that didn't play. Um, a Tuesday would be a very hard day for us, that's our, our really tough day so we, we'd have a double session, actually a triple session to be honest with you. Um, so we'd have a gym session, we would have um, a hard session, but all, all ball work based on our heart rate monitors etc. Um, and then we'd be in the gym doing um, upper body stuff on the, on the afternoon. Uh, Wednesday, we would train double session again. It would be more an individual, it would be quite a hard session, but it would be more individual, um, working on back four, working on the front players, um, coaches take separate things. Thursday is usually our day off, um, and Friday is just a general day, topping up on the opposition um, and, and doing a little bit of analysis and, and meeting stuff. We, we probably do a bit of that during the week as well. And, Saturday hopefully ends with a win. I just hope Hibs aren't watching this video because you just told us your plan. I'm changing that next week, Bob. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. What is the biggest misconception about being a football manager? Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of misconceptions with that. It's great, <laughs> that it's extremely glamorous. That, um, yeah, I don't know. It's some of the, the, the things that go on and people say are you know, ridiculous managers, you know, players don't try. I think that's probably the biggest misconception, mm -hmm. that players don't try. Players never not try, because players care very much for themselves as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, they do try. Sometimes they don't play very well. You know, that's just the, the level sometimes that they get at. But players are, are give absolutely everything all the time. Sometimes it doesn't come across the guy because they're having bad games. And under the naked eye, sometimes that is the easiest thing for fans to say is they're not trying when really true they've had a bad touch or they've just had a bad game and confidence is everything in football. You know, a player playing with confidence is can make or break you really. But they've all got they've all got very similar talent. They're very similar talent at this level. Um, but confidence and a real belief in what you're doing can, can give you that extra five and ten percent at times. So what do you do in your 17 minutes free time a week? <laughs> Go and watch games. Um, our, our chief scout Martin Foy spends a lot of time up here, you know, he'll be up here at least two days a week. We do a lot of scouting down in England as well, and obviously that's where we get a, lot, a large amount of our, our players from non-league. Um, it's getting more difficult because of the amount of non-league trains trying to get into the Football League ladder and, and they're paying even more money. So we've got our scouting system up here. We've got our own young boys, even at younger levels where we're scouting. But um, we spend a lot of time in the car. Me and Martin put on weight, even <laughs> wish, going around down service stations. So yeah, that's that's it. Otherwise, I'm back to Belfast to see my my youngest boy or down in Oldham to, to see my older boy. Mm -hmm. So does your match preparation ever change when the team's going to play on a national tough pitch? Yes, it does. Um, there, there's different ways of doing it. You know, the, the actual studies that I've been told are injuries come from when you, you go from one surface to the other, not necessarily when you always play an astro or always play grass, it's when you, you go from one to the other. So, you know, we've, we've tried different things. We've trained all week in astro. A lot of the players don't like it. So we, we now limit it to probably two two times maximum a week. It'll probably be the, the Wednesday and the Friday when we do our 11 v 11 stuff on the Wednesday. Just so it's a different bounce. It's a different, you know, it, it does bounce differently for the goalkeepers does, as yeah. well. Um, it skips off the surface, you know, but they're all different. Every Astro tip oh, pitch we play all is different. So I'm not sure what advantage it actually gives us. What are your thoughts on VAR being introduced? Has to happen. Uh -huh. Simply has to happen. Yeah, there will still be mistakes with certain decisions and you know referees are under so much pressure you know you've seen the, the game the other night with Man United you know by the rules of the game at this moment in time that was a handball but everybody in football it wasn't a handball you know you're yeah. thinking he's not looking at the ball it's going over the bar but as it stands right now 
my belief from what I'm being told is that you know was a penalty. So mm-hmm. referees are under massive pressure. That that isn't actually affecting VAR. We need VAR here. We can't. The full time referees won't come in here for a long time, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have the money or the capacity to do it. But VAR is something we need. You know, people's livelihoods are on the line. You know, clubs' livelihoods are on the line, and we have to have a little bit more help to the, the officials. Did you support a team growing up? I did indeed, yeah. Aston Villa were my team. That's my English team. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Aston Villa were my team. Um, <laughs> my dad used to take me all the time to Villa Park in the whole thing. So, I've been um, in the whole end, yes. Yeah, that was my um, my best game. It was Man United 3, Aston Villa 3. My hero was Gary Shaw. Oh, yeah. He was my hero for Aston Villa, so I'm getting, <laughs> getting away with you, do we better? <laughs> Fair enough. So, if you could change one rule in football, what would it be and why? Uh, they're not interfering with play rule. I find it difficult to understand how no player is interfering with play. Shouldn't be on the pitch if he's not interfering with play. Um, so that's a strange one. That's a strange rule that they, they go. He can be standing in the goalkeeper's eye line or in the way and he's not interfering with play. So that's a strange one. You know, the, the powers that they mess about with Mm-hmm. The game all the time and change this and change that. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Let us play football. You know it's so hard for the refs, and I think yeah. half the time I don't know what I'm complaining about because the rules change that often. Oh, yeah, definitely. Did you vote for James Scott for Player of the Month last month? <laughs> I don't vote for anybody, Player. Of the month. <laughs> um, I'm not on the internet. I'm not on social media, so I don't get the chance to vote. Unfortunately, that's that's yeah. probably best. Yeah, I think so. so. There's no danger at all in the job at all. Then. No, no. <laughs> When you were sent to the stands at Hamden against Rangers and Lumo scored that chip, did you have did you get a better view of the goal in the stands than you would have done in the touch line? Yeah, that was the idea, so I knew the goal was coming. <laughs> I'd be able to see it better. No, I it was a uh, obviously I would prefer to be on the, the pitch to celebrate as well, yeah. you know, with the fans and the players and the staff. But um it was a super view. Um, my family were there as well, so we enjoyed it just the same. <laughs> what would you say are three of your all-time favourite moments in your football life? I would say getting to the cup final. Mm-hmm. Um, and getting to both cup finals, actually, I'd probably use that as yeah. one. Making my Northern Ireland debut. Oh, of course. Um, and, and winning the league with Luton Town. It was, um, uh, there's a few more as well. Also, you, flex that you, you scored it against Liverpool, you've got to flex that. Yeah, that was. We didn't win the game. We didn't win the game. So yeah, so I, I, I'm still living off that a wee bit. Well, picture in my house and that there. But <laughs> I can't really live off that. We lost the game five three, but a good experience anyway. Uh, so I actually watched the game in preparation for this interview. So much, so <laughs> yeah, much. It was as well. So as a former Northern Ireland international, which Northern Irish footballer has had the biggest influence in your career? Um. I would say Michael O'Neill has probably had the biggest influence on my career. Obviously, he's an ex-footballer, but a manager now. Um, in terms of his detail and his preparation and what he actually achieved in Northern Ireland was incredible. You know, the European Championships. I have did, did I say that? that? That probably is the highlight of, <laughs> of any kind of coaching thing. You know, it was so big, mm-hmm. it was huge. But uh, Michael's had a massive influence me um, in terms of my thinking and even now still picking up the phone and, and asking questions and calming me down. It's my uncle Mark's last season as doctor. He's been at the club for about 15 years. Do you think on the last game of the season, if it doesn't mean anything, do you think you can throw him in the park? <laughs> I'd say everything means something. Um, he's, pretty, he's pretty when he celebrates, he's on the park anyway. So, you know, his conduct has to be looked at in the dugout as well. So, no, it'll be, it'll be, um, sorry to lose him. He's been great for us. Um, he's been a good support. He's been very good for the players as well. You're in the pick and rec aisle of a sweet shop and can only choose three sweets to, to have. What sweets do you go for and why? It wouldn't be the pig and mix, it would just be bars of dairy milk. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of bars of dairy milk, that's my guilty pleasure, unfortunately. And last question. I'm being entered into the Football Blogging Awards for Best Vlogger and Best Young Content Creator. Why should the people vote for me? Because you're good, you're passionate. Um, I've only seen a few of them, but my youngest boy, Charlie, watches them so he, he showed me a couple of them I think it was um, when you were doing your train journey um, oh, yeah. and Aki's away when we won um, I think it was Maldi's goal so um, oh. I think the passion and the dedication the travelling that you put into it I think come on, make him the blog of the year there we go thank you very much it's been an absolute pleasure having you on and I'm sorry we couldn't have any more team no I've, I've got so much more to ask you but we can surely arrange something else yeah we'll go on try and beat Aki's first of all yeah thank you very much okay so it's been a pleasure so guys, I really hope you enjoyed that interview and 
I just gotta thank my uncle Mark. He is the unsung hero of my YouTube channel. The amount of interviews he's been able to secure for me is unreal. They usually get a good response as well, so I really hope you all enjoyed that interview. And please do remember to vote for me in the Football Blogging Awards. How you can do that is in the previous video, links in the description. We have a deadline of the 24th of March to get as many votes as possible for Best Vlogger and Best Young Content Creator. I need your help and tell everyone you know, tell your mates, your dates, your da, your ma, your uncles, your aunts, just anyone that you know. Vote Gogsy99 and you will not be disappointed. Now of course Robo as a football manager, it's my first ever manager that I've got the chance to interview. Ideally if he had all the time I would arrange a podcast to do with him and it would be an hour or two because there is so much to talk about in football and what we talked about was just scratching the surface of all the current issues in our game. So if we can reach what 200 likes in this video I'll try my best to get another uh, slot with Robo but I can't promise anything. Also for the next Motherwell player to interview uh, just comment down below who you'd like to see uh, me talk to and I'll see what I can do because I aim to entertain. There'll be one more video up this week uh, before Hibs away. I'll be discussing my starting 11 for the Kazakhstan and San Marino games which I will be going to one of them by the way. I'm going to one away game uh, for Scotland next week. I'm really looking forward. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like down below if you want more of the Sansi content. Subscribe if you're new. Thank you very much to Robo. Thanks to my Uncle Mark. Thanks to everyone who's voted so far. Let's just keep going. Eh? And yeah guys, I'll see you later. Take care.